Lord. Hallelujah, Praise saints. The Lord. He Hallelujah. Is so awesome. He's good and so holy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. <laughs> I mean it. Hallelujah. God is great and God is good. Hallelujah. He is so awesome. Boy, I tell you. You know what? The older you get in the Lord, our desires should be more and more a longing yeah. to be with Jesus. Yeah. Closer. And one day that longing, that faith. It's going to be sight. It's going to be sight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. God Hallelujah. is great and good. This is the King's Road broadcast. Coming to you live today on the 18th of March, 2019. And I'll tell you what. God <laughs> is good. Amen. He is, and he knows when his people need a rest. rest. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, I don't think we realize, really. That's right. <laughs> I think we have literally slept a whole week. Oh, uh, not literally. Almost. But yeah, pretty Almost. close. We've, we've slept a lot and just getting rejuvenated in the spirit and and physically, you know, because when you're preaching the word and you're, you're walking it, it takes it out of you. You know, hey, you're giving your life. You're giving the life of Jesus is flowing through you. It's in your soul. I mean, the Lord is in us. He's in our spirit, man. He gave us a new spirit. He come in and dwell with us. And our soul is to transmit that life. Hallelujah. And it's by the spirit, the spirit to the soul transmitting through the body. Hallelujah. And he uses our tongue to speak his truth. Hallelujah. And After he puts him. that truth in us. Amen. We use him as examples because the, he is our main example for our life. And s many times he had his disciples come aside. Yeah. Many times. That's right. See, we l I always like to say, let's look at Jesus as our example because that's what we need to that's do. That's right. Amen. Amen. And the things that he did, we need to, to do ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. As Praise we follow his in his steps. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today's message is, what is fear? It boils down to this. Let us pray. Father, thank you today. Thank you for your word to your flock, oh God. The flock you tend and care for, Lord. Thank you, God. We are that flock today, Lord. You tend and care for us. And for all of your children scattered throughout the earth, O oh God, you are mighty God. You are the great shepherd, Lord Jesus, and bishop of our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have finished the work and you bid us come walk with you. Be a follower of the Lamb, whithersoever he goes, down the King's Road. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to stay in the narrow path, Sharon and I here, and everyone hearing, Lord. Teach us more about it today. Open our eyes to see. Correct us, O God, where we need correction. Strengthen us, O God, in the inner man, I pray. And crush the serpent, dragon, Lucifer down under our feet and all of his minions. In your holy, precious name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. In his name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. What is fear? It boils down to this. Now, we're, we're, we're just going to read this. I mean, listen. There's a lot of fear out in the world. People really, really, really do battle with this spirit of fear. Okay? Now, in the song we listened to, it was talking about the fear of the Lord. Okay? And that's a holy, reverent fear of God. That's good. And that's a good fear. <laughs> okay? But what we're talking about today is what is fear of and right here, I'm going to read this to you. I thought I had it on yours, but it, I don't have it on there, I don't think. But you can go there. Just go over here, click that right there, and go to Genesis chapter 3. Oh, I know where it is. I put it on the editor. Here, you can read it off of here. Here you go. Honey, Okay. just read it over here. I'll pull this over, and you can just read it right there. In Genesis 8, I mean Genesis 3, verse 8, okay? This is after the fall, all right? Go ahead. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. 
And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Of the Lord God. Of the Lord, let me see, of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. <clears throat> now we know why they were afraid. Okay, keep going. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art Where thou? Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and, and I, I was, was afraid. afraid. Because I was naked, and, and I, I hid him. myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not mm -mm, eat? Mm -mm, mm -mm. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The blame game. Yeah. Not fessing up, yeah, I did wrong. <coughs> yeah, Lord, I disobeyed you. But blaming it on his wife. That's right. And then she blamed it on the servant. Ser on, on the, the serpent. 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 Not the serpent. Right. <laughs> on the serpent. Serpent. The dragon. Lucifer. I'm telling you right now. What is fear? Fear is a spirit. Okay. And it wants to jump on me. And it wants to jump on my wife. It wants to jump on you. Every believer. Fear is trying to attack. And what does fear do? How does fear attack us? Okay. How does it attack us? It comes and it casts a doubt upon you. Just like in the garden. It casts a doubt. It makes a question to you. Because you're going through something. And I was thinking this morning. The Lord gave me this title of this message this morning. And I was sitting outside thinking about this message. And I remembered when I was 18 years old and I gave my life to the Lord. And then I had this thought, what are my friends going to think? You see, and that produced fear. You see what I'm saying? I, I have to be careful, you know, and all these other things. I don't want to, you know, hurt their feelings or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, but the Lord brought me through that time. It was about a three month period there where I went through and God did various things with me and allowed me to go a certain way that was not right. I had just got saved, you know, and I was trying to save my friends, you know what I mean? But I was going all about it the whole wrong way. You follow me? Should have just been prayer. Should have been distancing myself right. from them right. and prayer. And, and then, you know, things would have maybe been different, but God was teaching me even back then because fear was attacking me. See, I didn't want to lose my friends and I still wanted to be with God, but my friends were a bunch of dope heads, okay, and drunk heads or whatever, you know, rabble rousers. And so the fear was attacking me, okay? But I overcame by the blood of the Lamb, the word of my testimony. That's the See? same kind of deal that goes on. Not only <clears throat> what will my friends think, but what will my family think? Right. Or what will my husband think? Or what will my wife think? That's or what right. will my children think? That's right. What is that? It's fear. Of what? Man. Fear of man. A woman. That's, that's right. That's right. And what does the Lord say about fear of and man? What will my boss think? Oh, right. see, right. fear of losing my job. Right. All these things the devil will throw on us. And I'm telling you right now, we're in a time right now, the devil's really attacking the believer, the true believers, with fear. Okay. Fear about what are you going to do when they come out with this and make everybody take this little chip, you know, and, and you can't buy or sell without it. There are a lot of Christians, I was thinking this this last week, there's a lot of Christians that are storing up for the day that's coming. Okay. They're storing up food. They're storing up money. They're storing up goods. They're storing up, uh, you know, three or four different places to bug out to. Whatever they're storing up, they're doing it. Okay, they're, they're saving that up. They're, they're storing up. And they say, they will tell you, God told me to do this. Okay, now I'm not going to dispute that. 
But what I'm saying is, Jesus said, if you seek to save your life, you will lose it. And that's your soul. That's your soul life. If you seek to save it, you're going to lose it. It just depends on uh, their motive for doing it. And if they truly are obeying the Lord. Because, you know, Joseph, God had Joseph do that. But he was doing it for out there in the future because the Lord already knew the plan. And because he did that with the storing up of the wheat or whatever, he was able to feed all those people in the time right. of famine. That's right. So it's just, did God really say do that? And did he? are you specifying that everything you're doing is God's telling you to do in, the, in that way? Because I guarantee you, if God did not tell a person to do it, things can happen just like they did back then. Right. If it's it goes past today, it could turn into worms. That's right. That's right. You know, when they tried to gather it more than one day, like the Lord said to do just right. one day, just gather one it one day. day. That's right. If they tried to do it other than what he commanded, it... It turned to worms. It turned That's to worms. Right. So, That's see, right. we have to know... That the Lord is saying. And we can ask the Lord. Lord what is it you want me to do in this time? And whatever you want me to do. Provide for that Lord. Because see I truly believe too. That the Lord will do miracles in this time. Oh absolutely. Just like he did back then. You know with the widow and the oil. That's right. That's right. It didn't run out. That's right. But what, what do you have to have though honey to. To, to know that faith faith what do you have to cultivate trust trust <laughs> faith okay you, belief okay and so therefore you go through the trials today okay because when they give that chip out they make everybody on the earth if they do it okay if, if it happens in our lifetime and there's strong indications that it could very well happen in our lifetime then all the people getting back to what I was talking about earlier all these Quote, Christians, remnant, remnant of the remnant of the remnant, okay? We're not going to be able to buy and sell anything. It doesn't matter if you've got $50,000 stashed in your wall, okay? It doesn't matter if you got a bank account, okay, that's loaded to the hilt, all right? And you got gold and silver, whatever, you, you cannot buy or sell unless you have that mark, okay? That's the truth, period. You're not going to be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark. That's what it says in the word. Okay. So do you get afraid? No. Or do you remember what Sharon just said? God's able to keep the oil coming out of the jug. You see, Correct. God's able to show you where to go. God's able to teach you what to do. God's able to set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. And you'll have such a feast going on. Hallelujah. You'll be saying, Lord, I sure would like to have some meat. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, please bring us some meat. Amen. Mm -hmm. Have we done that? Mm -hmm. Have we done uh, literally done that where we used to live? We lived in when God put us in that house. We lived on a highway, just a small little highway, state highway. Just traveled by the people that lived on the highway. But, boy, I tell you what, we prayed, Lord, we would sure like to have some meat. We didn't have Hear any me. meat. And God gave us venison, <laughs> okay? I mean, you know, the, the this guy called us and said, there's a deer down here. Just got hit by a car, you know. And we go down there and get that deer. And then another guy, he brings us over a, side, a, a deer, dead, just killed. And then another time this guy calls and says, hey, this guy, you said meet him over there. He's got a deer for you. Whole deer. Yeah, yeah. Frozen solid. Just <laughs> killed it the day before. I mean, I don't know how many times. And boy, we, we, I just get to work. Process that meat, man. And I'm telling you what God is able to supply what we need every single day. This is a message. Fear, okay, getting down to the root of it. Saints, look, what it what is it? It's a spirit. It's unbelief. It's unbelief. It's disobedience. It's saying to God, you know, I don't trust you. That's what it's saying. But read Psalm 56, 3 and 4. 
What time I am afraid. Afraid. What time I am afraid. Oh, hallelujah. I will trust. In thee. In thee. Oh, hallelujah. I will trust in thee. And that word trust there means confident. Okay, oh, I'll be confident. Oh, in hallelujah. You, Lord. Be I'll bold. Be, sure in, be you, bold Lord. in the Lord. You hallelujah. are my refuge, Lord. What time I am afraid or have fear, mm, hallelujah. if I'm frightened, I'm going to trust you, Lord. I'm going to have confidence in That's you. That's right, right. In God, I will praise His word. word. Hallelujah. In God, I have put. In God. In God. In God. <laughs> I have put my trust. Mm, hallelujah. I will not fear what flesh, what flesh can, can do, do unto, me. unto me. Oh, hallelujah. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to read that verse 4 again. Check it out. Yeah. In God, I will praise his word. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. God told me to go this certain way. That's his word. God told you to walk a certain way. God told you to go visit your grandmother. God told you to do something. And you're being obedient to God's word. Hallelujah. And you're praising his word. See? And then all of a sudden, on the way to visit grandma, or on the way to doing what God's told you to do, something happens. Something uh, major goes on, and it stops you dead in your tracks right there. And here comes knocking on your door the spirit of fear. Because of something that's happening outside, here comes this spirit knocking on your door. See? Uh-uh. In God will I praise his word on the way to grandma's house. Hallelujah. In God I will praise his word in doing what he's commanded me to do. See, God gives commands to his people. Hallelujah. It's a commandment. Oh, I don't like to hear it. The commandments are done away. Listen. God is speaking to his church today, okay? <laughs> that is a command. When you hear God's voice speak to you to do something, that's God's command to you. That's right. Amen. Whether in his word And if or you in do that command, I'm telling you, you got right. nothing to fear. You walk in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 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 In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. God told me to go to grandma's house, so I'm going. And, and something happens, but God told me to go. And he said, you go to grandma's house. I'm being obedient, so I know I'm going to make it to grandma's house. Amen? Hallelujah. See, I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. What happened? Oh, there was a roadblock. Oh, roadblock. Oh, my gosh. Right? Right? I'm telling you right now. If you come up on a roadblock, don't fear. I'll tell the story again about the Cambodian, this in Cambodia, there was this brother and sister. We heard the testimony. It was a two or three part testimony on uh, focus on the family back in 1996 or 97. We heard this testimony. And this guy, he and his wife became missionaries to Cambodia. There's a lot more to the story, but I don't want to spend the time talking about it. Here's the thing. <coughs> God brought them to to Cambodia, and they devoted their life to the Christians in Cambodia. This was after the Khmer Rouge and had killed all those people, and it was Pol Pot, and it was really bad. And I'll tell you what. They got a call from somebody down on the coast. We've got all these tables and all this furniture and everything, and if you want it, you can have it. Well, they had to drive like 75 miles or 100 miles through the you know forest to go down to the coast and then go back. And they knew they wouldn't make it back by nightfall. Because you can't be on the highway at night. You get robbed by all the gorillas. I mean, it was, you know. And that guy, is, we're, let's go. And they went. And boy, they loaded everything. They got there and loaded everything up in the truck. And the sun was setting. And they got on the highway and the sun was gone. And they were driving. And sure enough, there was a roadblock. The gorillas. And he was just like sitting there. And... They got up there to the roadblock, and that guy comes over to the window. What are you doing? You know, roll, and roll down the window. He looked at the guy, and he said, the Lord just told him to say, you win. He just looked at the guy. He said, you win. And the guy just backed away from the truck, put his arm out, and those people just got out of the way, and he just drove on through all the way back to his camp where, the, where he had his missionary camp. See? Because... 
fear, see, he did what God told him to do, see. God told him to go get the furniture. He went. He knew he had to go get it, okay. And then God told him what to say, and he did. And then the door swung wide open, see. But, boy, that would put you in a, I mean, boy, I'm telling you. you oh, man, there's going to be some stuff <laughs> happening. You, that spirit of fear wants to jump on God's people, okay. No, we say no to that spirit. I don't care. It could be a little bitty thing. Or a great big thing. Same spirit. Same disobedience. If you're disobedient to God in a little thing, that's just as bad as being disobedient to God in a big thing. Because it's disobedience. You want to walk in faith? You want to walk in hope and in love? Be obedient to God. See, boil it down. What is fear? Disobedience. See, they were disobedient to God. And that's why they she were was, afraid. Uh, she, yeah, yeah, she was afraid. She didn't have everything... Because the devil came and planted that thought in her mind. Oh, hath God said, really? See? That's usually the way it happens. Right. You know, it comes from <coughs> many different directions. You know, the devil doesn't show up with a pitchfork, you know, with horns. What does it say? He shows himself as the angel we're of gonna light. Get, we're going to get there in a minute. That's what he does. I got that already pulled up over here. Now, so, I want you to read hallelujah. this. Let's go through these first few verses here in Genesis 3, because I just talked about something. Go ahead and read that. Now, the serpent was more subtle. Subtil. Okay. He was cunning. Cunning. Crafty. Crafty. Than mm. any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman. Now, listen to this. Yea, hath God said, there's the question mark, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Okay. Hath, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? See, that was a lie, he told her. You see? In the form of a question. Okay. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now There's see, first he's trying to twist what God told him. Right. Trying to insert his stuff in there. Well, she she was quick to correct him about what God okay. really did say. Right, right. Let me let me. I'm gonna go over there too. I'm gonna pull it up over here because there's a couple things I need to bring and out. And so what he's do what he's doing in here? Well, ye shall not surely die. In other words, he's telling her what God said to you. That's not true. Okay, look at this. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye shall not eat of the tree of every tree of the garden? He lied. Yeah. In the form of a question. Mm -hmm. See? A lie. A lie. A lie. The world will lie to the believer. You cannot buy. You cannot sell. You cannot eat. You cannot drink. You cannot work a job. You cannot do anything if you don't take this mark. That is a bold-faced lie. Well, wait a minute. 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 God said, your water shall be sure. That's right. Ye will have bread. That's right. See? Your bread will be sure. Your waters will be sure. So see what he's doing again? God's a liar. That's right. That's what he's saying. That's right. Now, we put this word. This is a very important word because everybody that is just, they're just fixated on this whole system that we have today in this world order. And everybody's just, boom, in, in it. You know, we're in it to a certain extent. We use the internet, okay? We go to the store. We buy gas. You understand? We use the mail service, whatever, okay? But we've come out of it in a lot of areas, mm -hmm. okay? We don't go to the doctor, praise God. We just don't, right? Right. Amen. Have we been all right? Yeah. Have we been through some trials? Yeah. Okay, but God has taken us, right? Right. And kept us, right? right. And he's going to keep us, isn't he? Right. And you know, another thing in that is the fact of... Um, we trust God for our salvation. Mm -hmm. The most important thing in our life 
is the salvation. And we won't trust God for other stuff in our life, for our health or whatever. You know, and it really boils down to the thing of, am I ready to go meet you, Lord, at any time? You know, if something goes on in our life, and there's been times, you know, when the enemy has attacked, and we literally thought we that was back. the end Amen. of it. Amen, amen. But what do we do? Lord, my life is in your hands. Don't let the will of the enemy be upon me, but only your will, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And when the Lord's ready to take us home, he will. We all have an appointed time, and we all have a certain amount of time on this earth to do what God has called us to do. Oh, hallelujah. And so we shouldn't have fear of going to be with our Savior. So if we seek to save our life, we're going to lose it. That's what he said. Does he mean that in every area? I, I believe, yes, he does. Amen. Amen. I believe, yes, he does. Amen. And it's really a boiling down point of, do I trust you, Lord? Amen. What does he say? I've given the herbs for the healing of the nations. Amen. Amen. What is that? What did he say? I've given the herbs for the healing of the nations. Amen. You know, so many things can cause problems in our physical life. That's right. And one of those is worry. Mm -hmm. It oh, can yeah. cause problems. Worry and fear. Fear. Boy. Well, worry is fear. That's right. It well, can worry cause is, physical problems. Worry is like the fuel. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fear comes upon a person, and then they start worrying. It's like, the more you worry, the more you fear. Oh, fill the tank up, you see. No, 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 no. Okay. We're going to show today how we take the plug off the gas tank and and just um, just let that drain out, okay? Just let that 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 worry just drain right out that of there. Fuel. That fuel for the fear, okay? First of all, be obedient to God. Lay down your life for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Take up your cross and follow Jesus today. Amen. Do what Jesus says. Do what he commands you to do. He's spoken what he's commanded his people to do right in his word. It's right there. See? And a lot of times people will do that too. Because they're afraid Jesus is going to tell them to do something. You know? And so they'll... They'll pick and choose. Try to pick and choose what Jesus is going to say to them. I've done that. Okay? No. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay? Have you ever opened and say, God, give me a word. Open up the Bible when he gives you a word and you go, oh, God, give me another word. <laughs> right? Uh, huh? Do we really mean it when we say to God, give me a word, Lord, and then open up the scriptures <laughs> and start reading? And there's the word. And you go, well, give me another. You start turning the page. <laughs> I'm being honest, man. It's the truth. Worry is of the devil. Fear is of the devil. It's all because of the fall, saints. Okay? But we are fallen. Hallelujah. We're born anew and filled with the Spirit of God. Amen? And we have all the power of God in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ of Nazareth is in us. And the Father is in us. Jesus said, me and the Father, we will come to you and make our abode with you. Hallelujah. That's the truth. So when fear starts attacking us, because, oh, I don't, I don't have that when I need oh, That's the devil. That's a lie of the devil. Because God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Hallelujah. Okay? Amen? We have to counteract those darts of doubt <coughs> from the enemy with, No, devil, you're a liar. My Lord said, I will. I will keep you. I will keep you from falling. Oh, hallelujah. I will provide for you according to all my riches and glory. Oh, hallelujah. You know, we have to counteract those darts of doubt with the truth of the Word of God. 
so many times the enemies attacked us in that area and saying, God's not going to do this or that or blah, blah, blah. And I just have to say, you're a liar, devil. I know my Lord will provide. Amen. Amen. I know he will not fail. That's right. I know he will not leave me. Amen. Hallelujah. According to his word. Amen. And guess what? He, the doesn't, Lord he always, doesn't leave us. Amen. He That's right. always right. provides. Amen. He's always there. His ear is open. His word says his ear is open to his people Amen. crying to That's him. That's right. That's right. He's got his ear hearkened unto that. Hallelujah. And sometimes he answers even before you call. Amen. The Hallelujah. answer is on, on the, the way. way. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Now, I want to read this out of 2 Corinthians. Now, how do we... Okay, we're boiling it down to the fact of disobedience. So, so what do we need to do as believers to stay victorious over the spirit of fear? Let's look at this. Now, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Okay. Who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold towards you, but I beseech you, that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. In other words, Paul's saying, okay, you think we're walking according to the flesh? No. He's basically saying, I'm, I'm going to be chilling with you because if I was there in the flesh, you know, mm, I, w I might just get you. Okay. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. You see? See, this whole world is based on the flesh, right? It's it's based on your your reason, your, your thinking, feelings. your emotions, your feelings, and your will to do what you want to do. Okay? <laughs> but God's kingdom is based on love and mercy and grace and all the fruit of the Spirit doing what He says to do. See? There is life abundant and everlasting in doing that. Okay, right. forever and forever. Just think about it. It always expands, 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 expands. Hallelujah. You're just continually being filled and giving out and continually being filled and given forever and forever for all of eternity. Okay. Where the other way is all for self, 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 self. And it just boils right down to just a big ball of worms and maggots and, and just burning forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. See, which way? We want to go the right way up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Laying down our life here, going up there. Hallelujah. Amen. In the spirit. But I beseech you. Read that again. That I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Okay. We're not using the methods of this world. To fight the battles we're going through. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not of the old nature. Okay? But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The stronghold of fear. The stronghold of doubt. Discouragement. The stronghold of disobedience. Okay? Hallelujah. Casting down imaginations. See back there in chapter 3? The devil... You shall not surely die, right? Casting these imaginations, take them captive, take them captive. See, oh, it's okay to take the chip because, see, that's not really what it means in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know the people who are going to take the chip? Those who are worshiping the beast right now. Right now, that they've got it in their head. They're, right they're worshiping the beast image right now. They're worshiping Hollywood, wanting to be like Hollywood. Yeah. I remember Star Trek when I was a little boy. Boy, it came out in 1966 or 67 or whatever. I was a little boy. We watched Star Trek every Saturday night, boy. Star Trek. Oh, yeah. I wanted to be Spock. You know, Spock was my favorite. Or Scotty. You know, he, he took care of the engine. You know? see what I'm saying? This is all imaginations. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing which exalts itself. Amen. You know, the devil is always Against trying to get the knowledge us of God. Go ahead. to go out of God's will. That's right. Always trying to get us to <coughs> disobey God's will 
And that's what he was doing in that verse. Ye shall not surely die. Right, right. He does it today, too. Oh, that's right. He speaks that little wicked serpent whisper in the ear. And even though someone knows what the Word of God says about a certain area, you don't have to obey that. You shall not surely die. Right. When we disobey God in any area, it leads to some type of... Of death. of death. Amen. Amen. Always. Always. Preach, Always. Preach it. So what does the enemy try to do? You don't have to do that. God doesn't want you to do that. Well, wait a minute. God told you to do that. His word told you to do that. Or he told you to do that in your spirit. And the devil will say, you don't have to do that. You shall not surely die. Nothing will happen if you disobey God. That's not true what he says in there. That's right. But guess what? He is the serpent. Everything he does and says leads to death. Amen. Amen. Everything. That's right. And if we listen to him, something will happen in the way of death every time. That's right. In one way or another. That's right. Hallelujah. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now listen to that, mm -mm -mm. casting down imaginations. What is the devil, the super person, evil spirit about? Blowing up where in our imagination all these what ifs and doubtful disputations. I want to look at this confutation, that word, it's log logimos. Logimos, okay? Casting down imaginations, computation, reasoning, conscience, conceit, imagination, thoughts. Pop See, that bubble. Cast them <laughs> down. Hallelujah. Pop that See? bubble. Hallelujah. And every high thing. Let's see what that means. Every high thing. An elevated place or thing. Altitude, okay? A barrier, height, high thing. See? Pride. Pride, oh yes, that's very, very Prideful good. thoughts. Oh yes. What does he say, boy? Every time in the word, he said he's going to cast that The devil will down. say, you better not witness to Jim over there at the other bench because if you go over there and witness to him, he's going to tell the boss and, you know, and you better not do that. And, you see what I'm saying? There's a spirit coming on you, that spirit of fear over trying to stove you up when God's told you to go over. Yeah, paralyze you. That's yeah. right. And, and, and it stoves you up from witnessing. You knew that morning you've been praying for old Jim. And you knew that morning God wanted you to walk over and say hi to him and give him a word from the Lord. And then the devil comes and starts putting that fear on you. See? You cast that down. You throw it down. See? You, because that's becoming a height. The more, the less, the sooner you get over to his bench and start talking to him, You've taken that thought captive. You have thrown it down. The longer you wait, it just keeps building yeah. higher and higher in your mind and taking over. See, and the devil gets more ground. You be obedient. Now, that, you can use that in any kind of any situation. Any situation, right. exactly. Okay. The Lord says, "Turn to the right." You turn to the right. You don't ask God why. You just turn to the right. Hallelujah. See. Now, if if a person, if God's telling a person to do something, one of His children. And there's a question involved. It's not always a sin. You can say, God, why would you want me to do that? And then he'll tell you why, and then you get obedient. You see what I'm saying? You don't question again. You see what I'm saying? You say, yes, Lord. We probably see? should never question. But that, well, what right. we like to do is, Lord, please confirm that to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to make sure I'm hearing you, Lord. But you can't say, you, 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 you can say, Lord, confirm it. Okay. But in the back of our minds, we can't say, confirm it in such a way that it'll go against the laws of nature or something like that, you know, because God 
He's not, uh, he loves us, but he, he is not bound by that. You see what I'm saying? He doesn't, he, has, he, wants he doesn't you to walk have by to do faith. what we, that's exactly right. What we want him to do. <clears throat> there was a family, husband and wife, they were like in their 40s, I think, maybe early 50s. And they went down to South America as missionaries and they set up camp in the jungle. And here comes these guys, man, every night coming to get them. And all they saw were these fiery angels standing there with big swords, man, like 50 feet tall. And they kept coming every week, man, every week. And during the day, people would come and say, you don't need to get out of here. They're going to kill you. And they was like, no, man, God told us to come here. And so finally, one night, they weren't there. And so they came in, like, you know, after two or three weeks, they came through and went into the hut, like, and they and the, the people were just sitting there, you know, husband and wife, and they said, "Who are those mighty men standing outside with their flaming swords?" You know, and, and it's like, what? They couldn't see them, see. But God let the enemy see them. Yes. As a witness he does to them, that see. Today too. And so they were <laughs> obedient, and God protected them. You see, all the way through. Same thing with Bruco. Same thing with another missionary. God protected, put a wall up, two hundred feet high around his camp. But one night he didn't pray very hard, and there was he a was little weary. there was a little door opening, and they could they went through, and he thought oh it was over, but they said what is this wall? Where is this wall coming? God let that be, see, because of the obedience of His servants, saints. We got to be obedient. What is fear? Fear is disobedience, and it boils right down to that disobedience. Yeah. Fear jumps on us. Well, we're not see? believing the word if we fear. That's right. We have to counteract it. I tell you what, the Lord's taught us so much in that area <coughs> is even doing that more we have to counteract that serpent tongue right. that comes and speaks all that junk of saying no devil you're a liar the word of god says this that's right we have to do that and look, look at verse six and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled see and it's hard to revenge disobedience when you're not being obedient right you see mm -hmm. and it's hard and but paul says here and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled god will take care of your enemies god will take care of those who hate you jesus said if they hate you they're hating me we'll jesus said if they despise you they're despising me mm -hmm. jesus said when they persecute you uh, so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. You jump up and down for joy. You leap for joy. You thank the Lord. You see, if they neglect you, Jesus says, know this. They neglected me. They neglected my prophets of old. Okay. That's the truth. We got to leap, jump, and rejoice. Hallelujah. Because we are the winners. Amen. Amen. We are. We are we're the winners. We are the overcomers. That's what it says. John said that in 1 John chapter 2. He said, "Ye have overcome the wicked one." He didn't say you're going to overcome. You have to strive to overcome. He said, "You you have overcome the wicked one." How do we overcome the wicked one? By being in Christ. How do you get in Christ? By repenting of your sins, believing the gospel, taking up your cross daily, walking with Him, Hallelujah, and being obedient to Him. See, you overcome the dragon by what? The word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. Amen. See, that's why we always say. You know, let us know what God's doing in your life. Testify to the fact of what God's doing in your life. That's your testimony. That's right. And that's part of what overcomes the devil, the Word of God says. Amen. So that's why we're always prompting you to do that. Mm -hmm. Because you need to. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you right now. God is able to bring all the conviction his people need. If we're taking up our cross daily, God, he, he's got an open door, saints, to us. And he can come in and show us, hey, you're erring here. Hey, this is a bad attitude there. Hey, you see what I'm saying? You're afraid here. Why are you afraid? God says, see, have not I told you? Have not I promised you? You see what I'm saying? I mean, with our life, we're we're more accountable. It says in James, we Sharon and I are like way accountable to the Lord, okay? Because of everything He's brought us through, okay. Each time He brings us through another test, another trial, 
another waiting on the Lord and he fulfills our waiting and he brings us through and then it just adds more and more and more and more to the testimony of God's faithfulness. So if I'm unfaithful, it makes it worse each time. You see, I don't want to be unfaithful. I'm not going to be by the grace of God. We're going to stand and keep standing and standing and standing all the way to the finish line. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're there. We're, we're there. Hallelujah. I mean, I, you're there. You born again. You feel the spirit of God. I'm telling you, you can get saved right now. You're listening to this. You can get saved right now. And you have just as much power in you as we have in us. Hallelujah. By the Holy Ghost. See, we overcome by the because of by the blood of the Lamb. What's that? The life of Jesus. So when a person gets born again, they get the life of Jesus. Amen. Can you add anything to that life? Can you make it bigger? Can you make it fuller? The Bible says he fills the universe in all of its parts. Can you make that fuller? No, but God can. He's stretching it out right now. Stretching out the universe right now. Scientists have proven it's just stretching out and stretching out and stretching out. And they, they don't know what holds it all together. They call it dark matter. <laughs> That's what they call it. There's dark matter and dark energy that holds the universe together. <laughs> well, Moses said, uh, God, I'm going, Moses, it says that Moses went into the, where the thick darkness, where God was, okay? Solomon said, God said he intends to dwell in the thick darkness, okay? So there's your dark matter, okay? Hallelujah. God's holding it all together. Jesus Christ fills the universe in all of its parts. Why do people reject Jesus? Because their deeds are evil. Right. They, don't they want love to come the darkness. The light. Right. They love the darkness right. more than the light. See, but we as believers, we don't reject Jesus. We as believers, we want to be obedient to God. And when we are not obedient to God, oh, 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 the trouble it brings to the soul, the trouble it brings to the situation. Amen. And we repent and we say, Lord, forgive us, forgive us, Lord Jesus. And what does the word say? If we confess our sins, what? He is what? Faithful. Faithful. And what? Just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Who wrote that? The, the Apostle John wrote it. Amen. By the inspiration of the, the Holy Spirit Ghost. Of God. He said, if we. That's what John said. Because John knew there was that old nature, see. But John didn't focus on the old nature. John focused on the Lord, see. John knew he was saved. Oh, John knew he was filled with the Spirit of God. Amen? And we know it as well. As believers, we all know it. So all this doubt the devil's trying to throw on God's people, no, 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 no. We throw it out. It boils down to disobedience. Fear. See? Because she was afraid in the garden. She was afraid. She was being shortchanged by God. Right? That's right. She listened to the serpent. And she was short. She was being shortchanged. God. She was afraid. She was missing out. See, and it caused her to be disobedient. That's what causes it. That's what causes disobedience. A lot of the times is fear. That's right. Fear of whatever. That's right. And that fear is being raised up to the throne above God when someone is disobedient. Right. Because they're giving way to that instead of what God says. That's right. It's a very serious thing. You look at it, you get right down to the rubber on it. That's very serious. It is. To put fear above God. And if someone's disobedient to God because of fear, what are they doing? They are, they're doing that. Right. They are putting fear above God. Remember what time, he says. Remember the time we were at we were at one of my relatives and and uh, it was Christmas Eve. Remember, we don't celebrate Christmas, but it was on that day, and some things happened, and the Lord told me, "You leave right now." Right. I said, "I'm getting my stuff," and just started packing up, and we left. We had one dollar and a half a tank of gas in the motorhome. <laughs> right. Right. But we left, and then God just began to open the doors. We made it where we were going. Yeah, you know, where that's he told us to go, we made it there. A God's real supply. test of faith, too, because, <coughs> you know, a 30-foot motorhome takes a lot of gas. I think 75 gets, gallons. <laughs> what, 10 miles a gallon? Yeah, 5 to 10. Yeah. Yeah. So we really had to trust the Lord. He said go, and we said okay. 
we really had to trust the Lord that he was going to get us to where he wanted us to go. Amen. There's times when he's had us go, and there hasn't been any gas in our truck. But you know what? The Lord got us there. And got us back, too. And got us back. <laughs> I'm telling you, the Lord can do wonderful things in this time. He can keep things going when there's nothing there. We've heard other testimonies that God has told people to go, but there was no gas in their vehicle. And they went. Yeah. And they made it. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is <laughs> you know, I remember this one lady where we lived, and we had given some testimony about that, heading out with an empty gas tank. And she said, oh, I could never do that. I could never do that. Do you see there's a cost to truly obeying God? There is a cost to truly putting our whole life in his hands and trusting him. For everything. Amen. This is where the whole body needs to be. Because when things start coming down even more than they are now in this nation and in the world. We are going to truly find out who we trust. That's right, Sharon. Amen. In ourself and what we can do. Or in God. And what he has done. And what he and has he done. Doing, and what hallelujah. he will do. Amen. He wants us to look at the examples that he did back then. That's right. And the, that's, the miracles that he did back amen, then. Amen. He fed his people with quail. Right. He gave them meat. He gave them water when there was no water. That's right. He gave them bread. When there was no bread, Amen. he gave them the bread of heaven. Amen. And Jesus said, I was that bread. See? You know, and he wow. came, it came down in such a way, it was symbolic of him. Right. And he was feeding his people. You know, but if we're in this mode, and most, most are very prideful of the fact that I can do it. I can do it. I have a good job. I can do this. I can do that. Well, what happens if all that's gone? Exactly. Where is your reliance? Is God showing you where your reliance is? That's right. Yes, we have to depend on him and know that he can provide a miracle if a miracle's needed. That's right. Well, you don't have any gas. He can make it go without it. Amen. You don't have any fuel. You don't have any propane. He can make it go without it. And he's done that in our life before, too. Hallelujah. When there was no way. God made a way. That's right. Maybe he was prompting someone to help, and they didn't. They disobeyed. Well, that doesn't make God not come through. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't make him not come through. He came through. Amen. He's always come through. But see, he's looking to us to say, I want to show you your heart in this area. You say you rely on me, but I really want to show you who you really rely on. And so he creates circumstances to show us. Who we truly rely on. Well I can tell you in this time. His people. He is doing things to. Get us all. To totally rely on him. And trust him. And believe him. And believe his word. And use him as an example for our life. In everything. Every area. The way he walked this earth. That's right. Because if we think of anything in this world saving us. Right. It's, we're going to find out because God's going to make sure we understand that thing. That thing is not your salvation. Yeah. I am your salvation. God protects his people where there's a lot of people that call themselves a Christian. 
that they think lock and load is going to protect them. Mm-hmm. That's true. What does he say? If you take up the sword, you'll die you by it. You will die by the sword. <clears throat> is God's word true or not? It is true. Okay. You can't have hatred in your heart. We've preached that many times. Premeditated hatred in your heart toward a group of people that's not working. See? And that's what Sharon's talking about. Lock and load. Okay? Because we are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ and it all boils down to disobedience. We're going to talk about this some more tomorrow because there's, there's a bunch of God's been giving me as we've been speaking because we want to boil this thing down even more because God says we are a fearless people. Amen. No matter what we're going through, we have to be fearless. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was listening last night to, uh, I mean, I was reading last night, God's smuggler story of uh, Brother Andrew smuggled Bibles into communist countries back in the late 50s, I think, early 60s. And he was talking about his time. He was just 13, 12 or 13 years old when the Germans occupied Holland. You know, can you imagine a 12-year-old? He gets up in the middle of the night and he can tell his mother can hear him because her, her breathing stops, you know. He can hear his mother breathing. But then when he gets out of bed, the floor creaks, you know, and he, her breathing stops. And she knows he went somewhere. And one night he went down and he put sugar in the gas tank of the, of the German soldiers, you know. <laughs> he wasn't saved at this time, but he put sugar in there, you know. And the, the guy was car was all sputtering and spitting and everything because he, he messed up his gas. And then another night he had some cherry bombs, you know, some fireworks, and he set them off, you know, <laughs> to scare the Germans. You see what I'm saying? He was doing what he could do, you see. But God protected him. He was just a little kid, you know, or just a young teenager. God protected him. Um, um, there's more to the story because he got saved and then he, God put him in ministry. He would drive into communist countries with a little Volkswagen full of Bibles and they wouldn't see the Bibles, you see, because he was obedient to God. I mean, they didn't see the Bible saints. The thing was packed with Bibles and they couldn't see them because Brother Andrew was doing what God told him to do, right. see. And we have to remember this. It's such a, such a powerful word today because Fear is going to paralyze so many people, right? It does today. It does today. paralyze. It, it does. does today. God's uh, teaching <coughs> all of us a lesson about that. We have to counteract that deal. Right. We have to counteract it. We have to pull down those imaginations, and that's what they are. The devil's right. trying to blow up imaginations right. in our heart Hallelujah. and in our mind. He's trying to. He's trying to get it to our heart is what he's trying yeah, to do. See? Yeah. He starts in the mind and he tries to get it in the heart. He wants us to deny he the wants Lord, us, man. Right. He wants us to be in unbelief. Mm. If we give in to that deal at all, boy, we can. you can sense the death in it. Amen. Right away. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pray, honey. Thank you, Jesus. Cool Lord, I thank you for this message. I thank you for all the lessons that you have taught us and that you have taught your people and Lord this is a big one about fear I ask you Lord you do identify fear as a spirit and right now Lord we take your authority oh, in the you, name Jesus. of yes, Jesus Christ yes, yes. and fear so, you oh, spirit God. of fear you be gone oh in God. the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Be Thank you, Lord. gone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're the mighty God. You're the righteous Lamb. Thank you, You're Lord, the great for Thank all you, Lord. you are Thank you, and Jesus. for all you do. Thank you, Jesus. And for all you will do. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name. We bless you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Our email address is thekingsroad2000 at gmail.com. Thekingsroad2000 at gmail.com. It really helps us when you write and strengthens us in the spirit. And also, you can write to behold a new thing at yahoo.com. Behold a new thing at yahoo.com. And check out all the links on these messages and the description. And go and be fed by the word of the Lord through devotion and through the word of God, through video and through audio.
Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. And I ask the Lord right now, Father, I do pray that you bring a special, mighty blessing to the people that support this work, Lord, that count it your work and important to you and to them. I pray you give them a special blessing today. Hallelujah. Mighty from Hallelujah. your throne room, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord. Glory to the King. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord, our God, lift up his holy countenance upon you and grant you peace. And the Lord be gracious unto you in his name. That's his authority, his character, his dominion, his humility, his obedience. Hallelujah. For Jesus was obedient to the Father. That obedience be upon you today and upon us all. In Jesus' mighty name, as we go forth conquering and to conquer in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.